Umar is the name of a man who was feared by the devils of human beings and those of jinn, both fleeing any scene that he was part of. How did Umar develop such a defense against the devil? The answer is not a sophisticated one. Umar would immediately seal any gaps in his life that he felt could lead to the entrance of satanic suggestions. And I share with you one such example. When he was the caliph of the Muslims, Umar once assembled the Muslims calling out into the streets, come to the masjid, as if something detrimental had happened. When all the Muslims had gathered in the masjid, Umar ascended the pulpit. The crowd fell silent, eagerly awaiting the announcement. And as is customary, Umar began by sending salutations on the Prophet ﷺ. And then he made his announcement. He said, Ayyuhan nas, O people, لَقَدْ رَأَيْتُنِي أَرْعَى عَلَىٰ خَالَاتٍ لِي مِنْ بَنِي مَخْزُومٍ I remember a time when I used to work as a shepherd for my aunts from the tribe of Makhzum. And after a long day's work, they would pay me by giving me a handful of dates or raisins, which would make me so miserable for the rest of my day. He then descended the pulpit and made his way home. The congregation was bemused. One of those bemused individuals was Abdul Rahman ibn Auf, who said to Umar, Ya Amir al Mu'mineen, Ma zitta ala an qamma'ta nafsak. Leader of the believers, you did nothing but humiliate yourself. And Umar's response was phenomenal. Wayhaka ya ibn Auf, woe to you, O son of Auf. Inni khalawtu fahaddathatni nafsi, I was sat alone with myself. And then I heard myself whispering to me, Anta Amirul Mu'mineen, you are the leader of the believers. So who can be better than you? And so I wanted to teach my soul a lesson. SubhanAllah. Umar wasn't fooled by his very self, let alone an external whispering of a devil. Sins left unchecked grow ferociously much like weeds. We should cut them off at their roots and at their first appearance. A simple glance can be followed by another, then an appointment, then a meeting, and finally a regrettably painful sin that weighs heavily on the back of the sinner. The further along this path a sin is allowed to traverse, the harder it is to overcome. So no matter what sin it may be, be it showing off, self-admiration, substance abuse, extramarital activity, prohibited financial transactions, unlimited use of the internet, abuse of the hijab, cut it off at its root, just as Umar did. When the sin is still in its infancy, when it is still a suggestion, shaitan is weak and so are his plots. This is certain because Allah the Creator himself said that the plot of shaitan is weak. He can't come to you unless you allow him to in the first instance. Therefore, we must blame ourselves for opening the door for him and we cannot blame anyone but ourselves. On the day of judgment, people will insist their misguidance was shaitan's fault, but he will reject this blame. Allah depicts this scene saying, وَقَالَ الشَّيْطَانُ لَمَّا قُضِيَ الْأَمْرُ Shaitan will say, when the matter has been decided, إِنَّ اللَّهَ وَعَدَكُمْ بَعْدَ الْحَقِّ Allah had promised you the promise of truth. وَوَعَدْتُكُمْ فَأَخْلَفْتُكُمْ And I, the devil, promised you, but I betrayed you. وَمَا كَانَ لِي عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْ سُلْطَانٍ إِلَّا أَنْ دَعَوْتُكُمْ فَاسْتَجَبْتُمْ لِي I had no authority over you, except that I invited you and you responded to me. فَلَا تَلُومُونِي So don't blame me. وَنُومُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ But blame yourselves. مَا أَنَا بِمُصْرِخِيكُمْ وَمَا أَنْتُمْ بِمُصْرِخِي I cannot be called to your aid. Nor can you be called to my aid. Inni kafartu bima ashraktumuni min qabl. Indeed, I deny your association of me with Allah before. Inna zalimina lahum athabun alim. Indeed, the wrongdoers will suffer a painful punishment. So, reject the whispers of shaitan when the sin is still an idea, when the habit is just a thought, when the obsession is still just a curiosity. In fact, Umar at times would be heard speaking to himself to ensure that his own internal voice was louder than any potential satanic whispering. Anas ibn Malik narrates, I was once walking with Umar until a wall separated us. I heard him saying from the other side of the wall to himself, Umar ibn al-Khattab, Amir al-Mu'mineen, Bakhin Bakhin, Wallahi latattaqiyanna Allah ya ibn al-Khattab ya awla yuhadzibannak. Umar ibn al-Khattab, leader of the believers. Well, 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 I swear you will either fear Allah or Umar or he will punish you. Look at how Umar spoke with himself, ensuring that his internal conscience was a voice louder than any other.
Today, many Muslims try to validate their lack of Islamic commitment with arguments that their environment is full of haram and that no one is advising them. Yet, our predecessors, as you just heard, wouldn't wait for other people's advice. They would advise themselves. And that is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Balil insan wa ala nafsihi basira. Man is a witness against himself. Even if he puts forward his excuses. The early generation of Muslims did not allow the welfare of their hereafter to be hinged on other people. They would advise themselves. And this type of self-introspection that I speak of may be achieved with, for example, an inspirational phrase hung over your desk, through listening to Islamic lectures, or through righteous friends that you keep near to yourself. It may even be through a piece of paper which you keep with you. There was a man who used to follow Sufyan al-Thawri, one of our predecessors. He noticed time and time again, Sufyan would take out a piece of paper from a small box. He would look into it and then he would put it away. This man became curious as per what was on the paper. And so it so happened that this paper fell into his hand and on it was written, Sufyan, اذكر وقوفك بين يدي الله عز وجل. Sufyan, remember that you shall stand before Allah. Umar would often admonish himself if he was concerned that arrogance, conceit, or a sense of self-importance was trying to creep into his heart. Despite the numerous promises of paradise, he did not allow himself to become complacent for a single moment. It was also known that he would not take part in the funeral prayer of a person who had died unless he saw Hudayf ibn al-Yaman praying upon him first. This was because the Prophet ﷺ had informed Hudayf exclusively of the hypocrites by name. On one day, a man from the hypocrites passed away, and so Hudayf did not pray upon him. Umar asked Hudayf, was he one of them? Hudayf said yes. Umar then said to Hudayfa, Billahi minhum ana. I ask you in Allah's name, am I one of the hypocrites as well? Hudayfa said to him, no, and you are the last whom I will ever inform. Umar exerted a colossal and continual effort to seal all of the possible entrances of shaitan into his life, neutralizing every attack. And we are similarly aware of shaitan's particular entrances into our own lives. We must identify those entrances, lock those doors once and for all, and throw away the key.